My name is Amelia. I'm a public health educator at Maine General Medical Center. This presentation will cover basic information on the stimulant drug cocaine. So what drugs are stimulants? The class of stimulants covers a range of drugs, including the ones listed on the screen and many more. Some of the big ones are methamphetamine or crystal meth, cocaine or crack cocaine, molly or ecstasy, and prescription medications like Vyvanse, Ritalin, and Adderall. Common slang words for stimulants are uppers or speed. Although all of these stimulants are made differently and with different chemicals, they are all included under stimulants because of what they do to the body when you take them. Illicit street stimulants and some prescription stimulants can lead to overdose if they are misused or used in combination with other drugs. The stimulant that is most often misused in Maine is cocaine. So what exactly is cocaine? Cocaine is a drug created from the leaves of the coca plant. It typically comes in a white powder. Sometimes it is combined with other white substances like cornstarch, baby powder, or flour when sold so that dealers can sell more product. For some purchasing cocaine on the street, it can be difficult to tell what is combined or cut with cocaine, which can eat, increase risk of overdose. Cocaine can easily be cut with fentanyl, an extremely potent and deadly opioid. Cocaine also comes in the form of crack cocaine, which is a harder, more crystallized substance. Both powder cocaine and crack cocaine are pictured on the screen. What does cocaine do to the human body? When you take cocaine, your body releases a ton of dopamine, which makes your brain feel happy. This can lead people to want to take the stimulant cocaine over and over again in order to feel the same high and rush of energy and happiness. When someone uses cocaine over and over, whether that is five times a day or just once a day, their body starts to adapt to using cocaine and it will begin to rely on using it. So if they are using a lot and they stop using quickly, their body will be very confused and it will experience withdrawal symptoms. Withdrawal symptoms from cocaine include painful insomnia, increased appetite, fatigue, depression, and slow to thinking. It can be helpful to think of withdrawal symptoms as perhaps the opposite of what the drug does to someone while they take it. For example, when you use cocaine, you may think rapidly and your body is used to cocaine affecting your brain, which causes you to think rapidly. So when you remove the cocaine, your brain slows way down and has trouble working at even a normal level. Experiencing withdrawal symptoms is uncomfortable and painful. There are also very intense drug cravings at this time. When someone is going through withdrawal, they remember how happy cocaine made them feel or how much energy they had or just how they weren't in pain. They know that using cocaine would get rid of their withdrawal symptoms. And this is why people keep using cocaine and for several other reasons as well. The effects of cocaine appear almost immediately and disappear within a few minutes to an hour. How long the effects last and how intense they are depends on the method of use. Injecting or smoking cocaine produces a quicker and stronger but shorter lasting high than snorting. This brief high of short-term happiness and alertness can cause people to want to use again. However, there are some unfavorable short-term effects like unpredictable and bizarre behavior. After using cocaine often for a long time, cocaine will begin to damage the human body. Some of the long-term effects of cocaine include narrowed or thinner blood vessels, nausea, fast heartbeat, and restlessness. Additionally, depending on how you take the drug, you can have other more serious complications. Cocaine is a very harsh and intense chemical. If snorted many times, cocaine can lead to loss of smell or taste and frequent nosebleeds and problems swallowing. If smoked, cocaine can cause a cough, asthma, and weaker lungs, which can lead to lung infections. Some of the most serious long-term complications can come from injecting drugs, either cocaine or anything else. When injecting drugs, the skin at injection sites can become scarred and damaged, leading the scar tissue to build up potential vein collapse or abscesses. If the injection drug equipment is in 100% sterile, it can lead to blood infections, endocarditis, tetanus, infection, botulism, and flesh-eating virus. If the equipment has been shared or used by someone else, there is a high risk of blood-to-blood -blood contact, which can transmit HIV or hepatitis C. To best avoid the effects of injection drug use, it is important to use sterile, clean needles every single time you inject. Needle exchanges are used for the purpose of giving people free, clean supplies to inject drugs in order to avoid infections, to avoid abscesses, and to avoid the transmission of hepatitis C or HIV. Bring in used syringes and they will be disposed of. 
and you can be supplied with clean needles, sterile works like alcohol prep pads, cottons, and sterile waters. Narcan is also available. Please call 207-872-4102 for the Waterville or Augusta exchanges. The locations and times are listed on the screen. To treat cocaine use disorder, there is no perfect treatment. Under doctor's prescription, several types of drugs can help some people treat their cocaine use disorder. Drugs typically used to treat alcohol use disorder, narcolepsy, obesity, or opioid use disorder can help treat cocaine use disorder. For example, medications used to treat alcohol use disorder by causing sick feelings when someone drinks the medication and alcohol. Sometimes this medication may be able to help some people with their cocaine use disorder. What are the symptoms of a cocaine overdose? A cocaine overdose can result in seizure, stroke, or heart attack. Therefore, the symptoms of cocaine overdose include chest pain, vomiting, nausea, or very rapid heart rate or breathing. If someone is experiencing these symptoms, you should call 911 and tell them all the information you have about the drug being taken so that the emergency responders can be prepared when they arrive on the scene. In the meantime, administer Narcan if you think the person may have taken any opioids. There are no bad effects of Narcan if they didn't actually take opioids, but it is helpful to give Narcan just in case they did take opioids. There is no Narcan equivalent for cocaine. Apply a cool compress to the person overdosing and stay calm. When emergency responders arrive, allow them to help the person. There is a good Samaritan law in Maine, so you will not be arrested for any drug use or outstanding warrants on the scene. Unfortunately, not enough people are being helped when they are overdosing from cocaine. Cocaine-involved deaths have increased largely in the past decade. In Maine, cocaine-involved overdose deaths have increased by 1,000% over the past six years. Of all overdose deaths that involve cocaine in Maine, 80% also involve an illicit street opioid like fentanyl, heroin, or morphine. There is a huge problem with taking cocaine and illicit street drugs at the same time. This can happen when cocaine is unknowingly cut with fentanyl, but also when people take cocaine and heroin at the same time without realizing they could fatally overdose. The number of people with an opioid use disorder who also use stimulants, like cocaine, is rising rapidly. This trend is happening in Maine and throughout the United States. Across the United States, cocaine-involved deaths are increasing rapidly.